you'll be able to view the various uh, courses and example projects. So here, uh, if you're interested in, let's say, machine learning, you can simply enter the keyword that is machine learning, and you'll be able to see the various courses and example projects that makes use of machine learning related topics. So you could go through it at your own pace and there are a diverse range of uh, topics that you could search on. And now coming to the part where I was explaining about updating your profile. So how do you do that? For that, you can click on the tab that says welcome back with your email ID. And once you click here, you will be able to see a button that says profile. So here is the part that lets you uh, update your account. So here, uh, please make sure that you upload a profile image and you edit your educational background with your uh, education background and research interest. And please make sure that the name will always be in proper capitalization and link your social media handles as well. So for example, I have linked my LinkedIn account and my Orc ID. So here under the activity tab, the participants will be able to uh, view the various courses that they are completing. The mentor and the community manager will be tracking your progress from here. And under the courses tab, you'll be able to see the various courses that you are currently taking. And once you upload a research project like Gazal Bhargava, that will be displayed under the projects tab. And once you enroll for any of the programs, for instance, the research fellowship program, that will be displayed under the programs tab. Now, how do you uh, check other student projects? For that, you can simply click on the tab that says projects. And here you will be able to see a diverse range of student projects on topics ranging from astrobiology, infectious diseases, precision oncology, precision medicine, machine learning, and so on. So you can have a take a look at all of the ex ex example projects at your own pace. And with that, now I'd like to pass on the stage to Vedika Rai, our former research fellow and MTech graduate from Amity University, Noida, to share her journey of uh, being a research fellow at Pine Biotech. And for that, uh, we do have a query from Richard. I'm unable to sign into the TBIN. All right, we'll be uh, looking into that. I have mailed you as well. All right, so if the participants have no other queries, uh, let's move on to the next part. Uh, and hear from Vedika Rai about her journey. So over to you, Vedika. Uh, can you share your screen, Vedika, and start with your presentation? Yeah, I'll do that. Thank you. Are you able to see it now? Uh, not yet, Vedika. Okay. I'll load it again. Okay, sure. Uh, so while we're waiting, I would like to know if the participants have signed up or if they're having any queries about signing up on the portal. If so, please share them in the chat. And once you have signed up, you can put a yes or a done as well in the chat. Vedika, would you like me to share your presentation from my screen? Yeah. You can do that. Yeah. It is a bit laggy. All right. Uh, let me share it for you. All right. So here you go. You can start, Vedika. So good evening, everyone. I am Vedika. And I've been a research fellow for, for, uh, with Omics Logic from the last... September, month of September, 
and i got introduced to this uh, platform as we had to do a minor project in college and we were just looking for internships most of the tutorials were closed because of the corona virus so my juniors introduced me to this tutorial and i thought yeah it would be a great opportunity to learn bioinformatics as you know it's the need of the hour and most of the drug designing or looking at the gene exp- are you able to hear me somebody yes, just Okay, having trouble hearing. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so this is how I got started. That um, we had to do this internship, and I mean my minor project. So I came here, and I have. So I'll talk a little bit about me. I have a basic degree in biotechnology. I've also done my masters in biotechnology. And can we have the next slide, please? so my research interests are i'm very interested in neurobiology especially being able to look at the gut microbiota and its relationship with brain disease, diseases and the development of the brain then i i also got interested in transfer cancer transcriptomics when i came here and virology these are my basic three interests so interestingly before i came here i just knew enough bioinformatics for me to write my midterm exams and assignments and i can navigate ncbi that was the kind of person i was and sometimes i also had to work harder on other assignments and give them to my class fellows so they would give me their bioinformatics assignments and they would help me with the notes this is how it was i get started i come here it's all about bioinformatics i was excited i'm going to learn something that's going to teach me about skills that we can currently use in every field so and this is how i started and then i ended up working on two projects can we have the next slide before that i would like to tell you that when i got started with my research fellowship we did a couple of um, projects that actually helped me understand what the basics of bioinformatics is all about then we did the bites and molecule scores where i also learned about things like metagenomics and i learned about a little bit about astrobiology and then the basic uh, tools that we use in bioinformatics the databases and a little bit about statistics then we came to the transcriptomics course where i basically got introduced to next gen- generation sequencing and how the biological data that is generated from various experiments or if it's even found in silico we are able to map the gene expressions and we are able to learn how the gene sequencing is done and the, with with the help of that data we can do some statistical analysis we can look at the pathways that are involved in diseases we can look at the molecular mechanisms and we are able to look at the basics of diseases and also with the curative intent and look at some biomarkers so obviously we've learned all these concepts we've learned the statistics we've learned the formulas now you also need to put it in the form of a bioinformatics project so i also did a course where actually i was taught how to write reports from start to finish what the structure is supposed to be like how you're supposed to ask your questions because i think that the question is the crux of your project if you have a good research question and it's strong enough for you to differentiate your data between the disease state and the non disease state or you are able to look at gene expression which is involves genes that are highly regulated or down regulated so we are able to look at the elements that form the molecular basis of diseases and we can differentiate them this was um, the courses that i did the next slide please so my first project was about the transcriptomics analysis of clinical data in covid-19 the goal of this project was as we know that um, last year the pandemic was in full swing and we had several waves so we looked at patients that were mildly moderately and severely infected in various days which was like the first day and after a week the patients were infected with the virus and we wanted to correlate the severity of the disease with the viral load that they were infected with and what we did was that we ended up collecting some data from uh, patients which we were able to find on the geo website as a uh, as a database and then we performed certain uh, tests on it and statistical exams and then we ended up doing the pca so the pca it's basically a dimensionality reductional um, pl- uh, it's a tool i know it sounds like a big word right now for people who are, who are like me and just got are getting introduced to bioinformatics 
but at multiple genes and multiple conditions we are basically able to look at them in a unified way that what direction of the disease are they taking us to and then we also looked at the expression of genes of different kinds and we were able to see that genes are severely differentially expressed in the mild and progressive stage so it's also because of how your immune system responds to the disease and i have uh, noted down some pathways also like the jack start pathway and the cytokine cytokine receptor interactions which are able to tell the course of your disease that if you will be infected mildly or moderately or it will give you a severe disease also what was very interesting to look at was that um when we looked at the viral load we found no differences between people who were mildly infected and moderately infected and severely infected we did find differences in their gene expression like you can see i have drawn the plots also and we have a, a bunch of points that are segregated on the plots towards its right and the left which shows us that there are differences in gene expression but it doesn't mean that if you have a highly infected uh, viral load and you're just uh, having mild disease you will not be able to you know spread the disease to others so it's also important for mildly or healthy people to stay indoors and prevent the spread of the disease can we have the next slide then i did another project over here which was a part of my masters dissertation and since i was interested in cancer biology but i think this feel like since so many people have been working on it it's become a bit repetitive so just to make it more interesting or um, make it more fun my instructor dr raghav he suggested that i could look at the tumor microenvironment as uh, what the tumor microenvironment does is it it's basically a niche of cells of uh, growth factors of signaling elements that our leukemia cells are surrounded with and we should be able to look at that is the tumor microenvironment also a cause of being able to um, generate this disease state or uh, it's able to turn the it's based leukemia the the kind of leukemia that i worked on it base it's basically about b cells so is it able to drive the proliferation of the b cells in such a direction that it becomes disease and what how it exists in certain kinds of tissues like the peripheral blood and the lymph node as we know that the lymph node is responsible for the growth and for the proliferation of these nascent cells into um, the adult or full grown cells which will then go on and provide immune responses again we did some pca we did some statistical analysis like the t test so we could differentiate between different groups of the disease then we also looked at the differential gene expression as you can see over here in a figure that uh, the genes on the right side that are outside of the cut off and are colored they were highly up regulated and they were causing certain um, changes in the cells such as it could be that the cells immune function it could be uh, you know down regulated or within the cell cycle certain checkpoints if they are released and the cells are and the genes are overactive it would not be able to cross the checkpoints in the correct pathway or the growth of the cells would not stop at the required points that will lead to an indefinite growth uh, growth and proliferation of the cells also we learned that the tumor microenvironment is able to very significantly affect the progression and occurrence of this disease as they can uh, as the tumor microenvironment can make the del, uh, can make the cells highly refractive to the kind of disease uh, that you're in and the drugs that are used for it and it also increases the inflammation that the cells are um, increased to and it's also responsible for dna damage in the cells so this is a brief uh, overview and I'll, i'll be showing you the projects and how to write these reports and how to go about the courses in detail can we have the next slide please um so like i said i have a degree in biotechnology but sometimes you know with a uh, with such degree you're also interested in looking at other fields so i am currently working as a market research training in global uh, training in global data plc where i would say that my work is more towards the business side where we look at the shares and revenues of companies but we are able to also map it to the concepts of biotechnology that we use in making the medical devices that have just published but uh, it would definitely my dream job would be to again go back to research and look at how these molecular mechanisms are causing diseases and what differentially expressed genes are there how do we sequence them and little bit to be uh, able to touch upon the curative approaches i think this would be the most interesting thing so i'm going to uh, be working towards that 
and coming to the uh, the work that i done i had written a poster about it but if i am able to gather more data sets which can establish a stronger link between the tumor microenvironment and the occurrence of the disease or in terms of the occurrence of the covid disease and then we draw more diagrams we make it more systematic we perform more statistical analysis on it then i can turn it towards a paper publishing so now heading to um, the portal i'll be showing you my portal and then you can take a look at the courses you can take a look at the kind of projects that we've done and how do we submit it so we have shared the link to uh, vedika's profile in the chat so that the participants can go through her profile along the way so let me pull it up for you i'm going to share my screen with you so you can take a look Okay. Also, would you like to start explaining, Vedika? Uh, yeah, we can do that. Can you go to the courses section? Yes, we have the courses section right now. So, as you can see in on your omics logic pro, uh, profile, you will have a section where you're supposed to talk about your research interests. You can give a little bio about yourself, and then you get started with the basic courses. Like I just said, I was also a beginner advance, and I mean, I ba I barely knew anything about practical bioinformatics except for what I had to do in class to get my grades. Never knew it would look so fascinating to me, and it would just be very interesting. so you can start with start off with your bytes and molecules course and uh, then you can also get an introduction to bioinformatics the introductory course basically tells you what bioinformatics is all about and how you can use big data like we know that uh, you know when we work with such uh, on even in research projects so at a small level you are required to work with thousands of genes and you cannot just uh, you know quantify them at once or you cannot just look at the differences between them at once so big data it's very important to learn those techniques and learn how we can you know do the uh, how we can use it in bioinformatics then in the bytes and molecules course you will also get an overview to the kind of fields that you are able to use bioinformatics in and you will get to learn how to use ncbi you will get to learn how to um visualize genes and how um you know the process of transcription translation the biological part of it works uh you can do that and uh, then you'll also learn a little bit about proteins and interestingly i learned that it's also important to look at the transcriptome and not just the dna sequence over here shigori can you please get to the transcriptomics course can you please open it so i can talk alongside thank you so like we say that the dna expression it is a bit static since you know the uh, the the, uh, the the genetic expression of cells you are born with it but it's the transcripts that undergo more modifications and they will ultimately lead to the production of the protein products that are responsible for you know the occurrence of diseases or the differences in pathways or the uh, botched growth signaling factors etc so you will begin with uh, learning ngs and ngs is also very in technique these days you will learn how to do the rna sequencing you will learn how to prepare your data for downstream analysis you will learn statistics and i think the most interesting courses to begin with were me when i learned about rna uh, rna seq techniques where we were able to look at raw reads and we were able to figure them out how we map them how we determine what genes they are then coming to the differential gene expression and gene enrichment which is something that we also do very often in our projects and then you can also when you move on you can go to the uh, machine learning uh, systems and then you will learn how to do supervised and unsupervised machine learning and for those of you who are into coding you can learn python you can learn r these are the languages that uh, basically we use for coding since i don't have so much of a coding background so my instructor he helped me with the coding part sometimes we need to segregate the data sometimes we need to look at lot, uh, plenty of data so i got help with that and uh, you know you can also look at other kinds of courses like they also have some demo project courses like the liver cancer one the one on covid since last year covid was in full swing so you know everybody wants to learn that and i think this also ignited our um, interest in virology again otherwise 
mostly people are concentrating towards neuroscience and cancer biology so that is that you can take a look at the courses of your interest and you will also learn what databases what tools to use and within these courses what is interesting is that you'll also have some practice exercises so it's just not reading up stuff on your own and theory you'll have these practice exercises that you can work on yourself and then you can come back to your doubts i also felt like to begin with when i was beginning with these courses i think it got a bit difficult for me to understand what these signatures are and how you use these transcriptomic strategies and how the gene, how do you look at gene maps and then you have to combine a lot of approaches it does get a bit uh, tricky to learn with so your instructors will help you with that they'll give you one on one classes and um, and the practice exercises yeah like i said they really help now coming to the the projects that i worked on here's another resource that you can look at just for the coronavirus and you'll also learn about a little bit of the epidemiology you will learn about how we can backtrace it to the organisms like we all know the story of wuhan and how the coronavirus spread from there and it's also very related to bats and pangolins this family of the virus that's infecting people and that caused the epidemic so like so we just get to the the covid 19 project and i'll take you through it so while you write your projects you have a, it's it's a set of steps that we have to follow and i think it's it's something that we do everywhere even when we write a report so you want to do a research paper you will get start off with collecting a data set then working on it um through your materials and met method section and then you should be able to derive some uh, con some significant results and you will be able to look at the data that way so then you write an abstract about what you do in the project then you write give an introduction to the theoretical part like you could talk about what the coronavirus is all about what are the stages of the disease and how do people get infected then you will tell them the methods that you did like i just talked about the statistical analysis and the principal uh, p the pca and stuff like that then you can discuss what did you learn from the project you can also talk about your results before that you yeah, obviously you'll be doing the results first and then the discussion what is what is it that you can draw and what can you attribute the diseases to and it's not only limited to diseases if you're interested in the agriculture side or if you're interested in the microbial side you can also do projects like that then you'll conclude your project you'll go give your references and then you'll give an acknowledgement so this is a format this is like a standard format that you should keep in mind when you are do, uh, writing a project so basically when i did the covid project um what we did was that towards an introduction we were able to look at uh, the genome of the covid uh, the covid virus a little bit we got an introduction to it that it has about uh, you can say it shares about 80 to 90% of its um, sequence with bat and pangolin virus and then uh, the 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 gene uh, or i would rather call it the dna of the virus um, so yeah, the uh, the genetic material or the rna of the virus it codes for various um, segments of the virus like the uh orfs and then the envelope and the membrane and the spike and then the capsid protein code like we all read about in our virology classes and sometimes they also have some accessory proteins that help the virus penetrate better into the cells and cause the disease so this is some uh, basic introduction to covid and then what the spike protein of the covid does is that it binds to ace receptors which are also some receptors uh, that are like highly concentrated in our heart and lungs and many uh, drugs are also made against these receptors then the covid virus from your nasal tract it goes into your lungs and then whatever the disease severity has to occur it occurs so like we collected this data uh, for this uh, for this project and we collected about 180 samples from 98 people which was segregated into the base day of the disease the day they were diagnosed and then uh, a week later or 5 days later where you can look at the progression then we did the pca for it where we kept a threshold that if the gene expression um uh, it occurs beyond a certain level then only we will consider it significant uh, which was done in the quantile normalization step where basically you will transform the uh, genes into a bunch which can be uh, compared with each other 
because you don't want uh, any kind of background noise or genes that are not significant or very mildly expressed that won't change the course of the disease uh, to affect your results. Then you do some differential gene expression about it. You will select thousands of genes. You will cut them down to the genes that, uh, that cause the disease. And then you can help with the help of various diagrams and charts and um, bar plots. You can look at the results. So we found out that, like I've written here, that the COVID disease, it gives you a very hyperinflammatory state. And there are various pathways and uh, genes that, you know, will also affect the ability of the immune responses that, are ho that the host will do to the viral proteins in the form of cytokines, etc. So this was a little technical sci-fi facts of the project. And then I'll also walk you through the other project which I had done as part of my uh, final, final year's master's dissertation. I came back here again because like it was COVID and uh, what would you think of doing? So, you know, the uh, like all these institutes and stuff were closed, but I'm so glad I did it. It was, there. it was a very interesting project to work on. And the good thing about it is it's all of it is so interactive that you know you're able to visualize it with your eyes, you're able to dive into genes and you're able to look at the results instead of just sitting in class and just reading theoretically about things which I know can get a bit dry and uninteresting to work on. So to begin with for a project, you will also get some data sets, uh, which you will, like I said, you can obtain it from the GEO website or any other database portal uh, related to your disease. And then you can, you'll get the counts of the kind of genes and the gene expression that occurs in a disease. Uh, you can take the raw data and then you can work on it. You can perform your statistical tests. You can annotate it to the various gene IDs. You can look at the pathways that are involved in the disease. So we'll just get to the introduction and the method section. I can just talk about, so you'll basically again, get an idea about what the projects are all about. So again, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, it is a disease that affects uh, the B cells where the immature B cells, they, are, they uh, undergo such high levels of proliferation that uh, the count crosses a certain value, which is obviously medically kept, uh, kept as a cutoff. And it can cause, that's why it can cause various symptoms and the uh, stages of the disease. So what we did was that we, again, we collected some data from GEO. Uh, this time, like I said, that, you know, you, uh, not only the disease, you can also look at the various types of tissues that are involved in a disease, like we did peripheral blood and lymph node. And uh, we also looked at other conditions of the kind of cells and the markers that they showed. We chose CD19 because it's highly, uh, um, I would say, like a statutory when it comes to this disease. So it helps us differentiate between healthy and the disease cells. Then we again did the PCA, we did some uh, differential gene exp uh, expression. And a lot of these uh, uh, steps were done on the tBioInfo servers platform, which is uh, here you can look at the pipelines, you put the data in and you get the results out with the certain conditions that you expose your data to. Then we had to also statistically uh, determine that if the gene that differentially expressed, do they even make any sense for them uh, to, to be this way or not? So we did that, we used certain formulas and tests. And then again, we did the differential gene expression. And with the help of gene ontology, we were able to concentrate uh, the genes that affect the molecular and biological functions of the disease. So you can use various online tools. You can also code and look at the, uh, the kind of diseases and the genes you're looking at. So that is one thing. If we get to the results of the project, I, you can just uh, show, see that it looks very interactive when you do it in the form of charts and plots and it also gives you a lot of clarity. So like you can see that the various subgroups of the disease, like lymph node or blood or the disease or the cells that were healthy enough and the unhealthy cells that also had markers, we determine them, uh, their uh, propensity to cause a disease in the terms of certain percentages. And you see that how they're differentiated on the charts also. You can, like I just talked about in our previous project also that the upregulated and downregulated genes, we can see not only how much they change and how they change and what these mutations are able to cause. Now coming to the discussion and conclusion of the project. So we did learn um, that uh, various signaling pathways, basically there was a very interesting pathway called the notch pathway that is responsible for uh, causing changes in the tumor microenvironment 
which is able to cause the occurrence of this disease and the notch pathway along with some other signaling pathways you know that we usually read in our cell biology classes uh, they will also affect the tumor microenvironment which can interact with the cells and determine the fate of the cells if it go grows into a network of healthy cells or unhealthy cells also we can note certain like i've given the names of certain genes like it is the pi uh, pi k3 cd gene it is involved in the proliferation of the cell it is involved in the development of the cell and then t cell receptor signaling like it tells us that you know it's not just limited to the b cell proliferation but the other kinds of immune cells also they all work in a niche which is where the microenvironment comes in then certain uh, genes that will affect the metabolism of proteins and lipids which can lead to the production of certain signaling factors which may be faulty or which may be healthy and uh, there are also genes which can mutate it can um, contribute to the drug resistance or the uh, reoccurrence of the disease which is also there and then since we know that most of these mechanisms are molecular and they involve the dna sequences and stuff so you will also look at a cll patients they will have higher rates of translation and the regulation by the ribosomes of the genes they will be lowered so that can also lead to the uh, occurrence of the disease as the the signaling when they occur in uh, the dna and rna it will lead to the occurrence of uh, certain kinds of in faulty cell uh, cell cycle and the mitotic spindles may be affected and these are just like a bunch of um, you know phenomenon that can occur with the occurrence of this disease what it can also help us do is it can look at bio we can look at biomarkers that if we see that there are certain genes or uh, that are differentially expressed and they can affect certain functions of the um, cells like the dna repair will be altered the signaling pathways they will be altered it can cause an inflammation or the it can affect the organelles of the cell like it may cause some mitochondrial um, air, dysfunction in the cells and it can also uh, cause some faulty occurrence of the cellular processes and signaling cycles like we read about the calcium dependent kinases and the bcr receptors etc so this was about it and when you do it in silico it also gives you a very thorough look at what uh, like i worked on the disease side of things so i think it is a very thorough and a very interactive way to look at things so i'm very happy and i'm actually very happy to be coming back here today to talk about my projects and my journey as a research fellow and it was very interesting and i'm so thankful that i was able to do this uh, side of bioinformatics things and i'm always looking forward to learning more about such stuff so thank you for this and if there any other any questions that you would like to ask about writing a project or uh, anything in just in general please feel free to ask yes uh, we do have a query from uzma manzoor and she is asking have you done all these courses online yes uzma so like the fellowship that we did we mostly do it online and you can see that they have a portal of the courses so what you supposed to do is you supposed to go over the study material they will give you certain videos also in the study material like when i started with the transcriptomics course i remember i was able to look at how the next generation sequencing is done how the um, the, the, the i would say the samples are prepared how do we map them to the genes and what strategies are used so you should be able to uh, mostly you will be doing these courses online and then you can always get in touch with your instructors if you have any doubts or if you are stuck somewhere in doing the assignments so that is how it works and they've divided it into lessons for each topic so i think it makes it easier to understand things and you can go at your pace and you can start off with the easier things and then work your way up that is how we do it thank you so much avitika uh, and i hope your query got answered as ma and i have one final query for you that is uh, you have gone uh, a really rigorous training right completing all the courses and example projects so uh, and uh, and you have also completed two research projects so how has all these training and all these mental guidance help you in your present field of work okay so that is a question that's very interesting and very i would say way to answer at once but 
right now what i'm doing is i'm working as a trainee like i said in the market research field so my work is more allied towards uh, you can say the marketing side of things and how companies work how do they generate revenues what their quarterly reports are and all that so i wouldn't say that it's so much related to uh, biotechnology but the kind of products that you look at when they look at medical devices and when you look at diseases when you look at therapies that they perform when you look at some antimicrobials when you look at some uh, you can say some scaffolds or uh, uh, tissue repairing devices like which is something i'm currently working on um so i think when you have a thorough um, knowledge of bioinformatics when you're able to do things in silico you're also able to do them better in a physical way of course bioinformatics research is something in itself it's a very big field and it also helps you do uh, research like on, on a lot of drugs or you know you can look at the like i just we keep talking about these differentially expressed genes so when you look at those uh, basics of the disease i think it obviously helps you understand better what you're up for and as when you look at the genetics and you know the molecular mechanisms or like i said the up regulated down regulated genes it will always give you a very thorough understanding of the disease and if you're planning or if you're somebody like me and if you're you know planning on also getting back to research it's a very good way to go about bioinformatics and then open your uh, way up to other fields what i would like to say thank you so much vedika that was really wonderful presentation and you also answered the question really well and thank you so much yeah. once again vedika and we are so glad to have you back and so uh, right thank you so much and uh, with that now we would like to uh, move on to the next part of today's webinar that is uh, i'd like to pass on the stage to dr mohit mazumdar who will be talking uh, uh, more in depth about the research fellowship program and what are the various resources and registration costs and so on so with that uh, the stage is all yours uh thank you shrigari and thank you vedika for this wonderful wonderful presentation and it has been really great working with you and uh, having you all this while uh, working on these several problems and projects i hope that with whatever experience you're gaining right now uh, and combining with what you already know you can shape up uh, whatever you want to do next in a more you know data driven manner where you are taking the right kind of decisions for yourself because now you have gone through the experience and maybe replicate some of that and not do the same mistakes again so uh, about the next things um, i would like to maybe have more interaction with people who are around so people who have joined today's session if you guys have any questions please happy to answer those um, so uh, uh, there is a question about a scope in clinical chemistry so it's not my area of uh, uh, research or my area of you know I, where I, where i do work which is uh, not clinical chemistry but there is a lot of scope in clinical chemistry which you can obviously correlate with the the, uh, the changes that are happening so there's a lot of work that has been done in uh, testing uh, and in uh, in using clinical trials also so in that we have several uh, different stages where we use clinical informatics as a tool so a clinical chemistry and clinical informatics uh, are two separate things but they align at some point because of the use of chemistry in all of this so from drugs to you know how our body behave chemistry plays a huge role so that's vaguely what it is but i mean it would be best to google this by because you will find all the answers you will find articles you will see that there is a correlation with what we are doing with clinical chemistry as well okay there is a question is in the role of machine learning in biotechnology it's a very very uh, broad question because biotechnology includes uh, technology that are developed with the help of biology which involves biology so there are like so many different uh, things that people are doing in bio um, biotechnology which involves you know pro food production which involves you know agriculture which involves biomedical data science uh, biomedical data re biomedical research which involves uh, healthcare research so i think it's it's a uh, it's it's playing a huge role in every place in all of these fields that, as i say because what machine learning is is machine learning is simply data analysis 
so machine learning is that you are trying to learn make the machine learn so that he can, the machine can make uh, these complex analysis um, with much easy with much ease and also learn to do predictions because what we are doing in machine learning or biomedical data science is that what we are trying to predict we are trying to predict based on a pattern so whenever there is like data there is pattern and that is what uh, you would observe like even while you're driving there's a pattern in which you're driving then uh, an, with in compared to another person when you're driving you're looking at the uh, person who is like in front of you driving another car and predicting that how how the speed would be how much distance i have to keep all those predictions keeps on going in inside your head so similarly when we have a lot of information and uh, this information could be three dimensional information uh, this uh, from protein structures this could be uh, information from the genes that uh, just vedika was discussing about gene expression so all of this is a big data now and uh, with this there is always a hope there is always uh, there is always a pattern to find and now why this pattern is important obviously that pattern helps us to find diseases diagnose them before it it could happen which could be a great relief for humanity if we could predict the diseases before they happen and take preventions so that is where bioinformatics is again playing a huge role and after after also like having the disease we have all those samples where we see stage wise differentiation between how a disease is progressing so that could be answered through bioinformatics through machine learning and all of that so i hope that uh, answers your your question uh, in that sense so there's another question can a research fellowship help for publishing the papers so kavya um, okay so this question is kind of uh, more relevant to the project so a research fellowship helps with uh, like helps every student or every participant to first learn about the technology and then apply the technology and then apply it on an independent research project so there are different stages so you start with stage 1 you learn how to what are these technologies how to uh, you know start applying them in real data sets and that's what the course work is all about and also like the at the same time mentor mentor mentors are associated a team is there to help you out go through this process this is very like done easily with all the resources that we shared which is learnomics logic and the tower platform it it actually simplifies all of this complex analysis in a very um, graphical manner and then you you get to develop this understanding that what kind of data you have to look into what kind of analysis you can use and then we have r or python that you can choose and you can work uh, use those uh, programming languages to do this uh, on a command line interface so all of those things are there so you can do co with code or you can do without code so you don't have to be a proficient in coding when you are joining this program but you will slowly develop an understanding how to use code for bioinformatics not to develop your own algorithm because that requires a very intense training which is not possible in within the scope of our training our focus is bioinformatics and research so yes our our hope is that you go through that process and you come up with the publication because many of the students have done that and have been able to come up with a publication so we believe that if you follow the process if you if you learn with us if you practice and if you work on a research project which is interesting it's kind of doable to publish that all right uh, there's another question from Al uh, alpna uh, we will be uh, we will be guided to start a project and write a research paper so yeah it's a question so yes and that's what i was discussing that uh, the project has different stages the project starts with an hypothesis which is what you would want to develop so any research area you are interested in and we are like a company that that offers you to work on any research area that has all this data available publicly publicly available data we are not afraid to work on any project that we are not discussed here so if you have any new idea any new disease any new uh, you know it could be agriculture it could be biotechnology it could be any other field related to life sciences and if there is publicly available data we are a group of data scientists who can help you understand the data correlated with the biology and then understand also the demand and the need and then you know think about what are the outcomes that we could 
uh, do with that project. So that's the entire uh, pipeline, but it requires you also to work at the same time, practice and learn, and then uh, code, uh, work with the team. So all that experience also counts at the end of the internship and the fellowship, because you go through a team learning experience, working with a team, as well as doing a scientific research project. So all, all of that is a really key feature of this research fellowship program. Okay, there's a question by hand. Uh, are you offering any scholarships for the beginner researchers from the developing? Yes, uh, we, 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 we are. So uh, I would request all of you to also reach out to us. It's very easy to reach out to us um, for any sort of you know uh, communication. Our team is available online and you can reach out through our website. You can email us for all of your queries related to the join, uh, you know, joining the program. And yes, uh, maybe I can quickly show. So I'll ask the, any of the team members to maybe share the link for the registration. Uh, there are no restrictions, Kavya. So one of the biggest advantage for the research fellowship program is that it's a fellowship program, which means we are mostly providing all of this in an prize that could sustain the program. So it's not something that we're doing and we are providing a lot of resources from our part to make it uh, make it a comprehensive program. So yeah, it involves all the all the materials that are available on Omics Logic Learn and um, TY Info platform. So you will be able to access all of that. So this is what the research fellowship program is all about. Uh, okay, let me share my screen quickly and show you how to register and look for, um, I mean, get scholarships and apply for scholarships because we do offer uh, scholarships. And as we are heading towards the end of the year, uh, we have some scholarships uh, available because uh, the scholarships are going to be un invalid for the new year. With new year, we will start with a new new uh, scholarships that we will be offering for the winter programs but for now there are few seats available very few seats available because uh, we recently we are towards the end of the year and uh, there are some scholarships so there here you, you can find out about all of this in this link and also like you'll be able to find out the payment process and all of that here so uh, and um, if you are from developing countries and if you are from low income countries, you can obviously reach out to us. And uh, if you can't join the research fellowship program and if you think that it is um, still a little expensive for you to afford, considering the condition that you are in financial condition you are in. So in, in that case, you can start with the basic subscription, which is like a really, really amazing thing for all of us here who are learning bioinformatics, using bioinformatics, because it's it's just a $10 subscription that allows you to access all the courses and projects which are available on Learnomics Logic. It does not involve mentor guidance because that is impossible to cover in that cost. So the mentor guidance and project is what research fellowship is all about. You can find out, check these payment links and reach out to us for scholarships uh, for research fellowship program. But if you can't do it, you should do this. I would highly recommend you to take the basic subscription on TBA Info platform and, uh, and start your uh, research journey. Because in this uh, subscription, you will get access to all the resources that we have on Omics Logic Learn, which involves the projects and all the tutorials also. So it helps you to do this on your own. And if, when you are not sure or when you are, when you are, don't have, when you have not enough time, you know, to do this dedicatedly, and you think that you would start in uh, maybe December or maybe in January, in that case, you should do the, take the subscription on Omics Logic Learn and start with the courses here. And in the courses, you would be able to do all those things that uh, Vedika was talking about. If I give you an uh, example of, you know, these coding lessons, you will find that there are code blocks that you can run and uh, learn about coding, uh, which is both R and Python, very important in today's uh, skill set world, uh, looking which is being looked upon by industry. 
So here also you will be able to run all of the pipelines. So these are more tutorial based hands on courses. So these are not like typical theoretical courses that you see other way. Otherwise, these are mostly hands on courses, which involves going through a practical example, going through a data set. So in this entire experience, you learn about how to how to interpret, analyze and what type of transcriptomics uh, or, uh, you know, gene expression data is all there. So you learn about the history. What are the ways RNA can be quantified? You're thinking you're you're kind of analyzing RNA. So you you know about all the things that could quantify RNA first, and then how big data, like how next generation sequencing, is is helping in several of these uh, discoveries in several of these uh, products and all of that. So it it obviously there are some other lessons that you would have to do to learn about advanced statistics and machine learning. But all of that is included in the basic subscription, which is just for ten dollars. So um, I think um, this is what I wanted to kind of uh, tell you all today. Uh, if there are any other questions, so there are some questions I can see in the chat. What is the difference between starter education and research packages? So we have not uh, started the uh, uh, educational and research packages here, but yeah, the research package is. Uh, when you have your own data, uh, which is generated from your own lab and which is not available on public repository. So in that case, uh, you, you would have to upload the data on our FTP server and that requires a research license. So if you're working for a research lab and you don't want the data to be public and you want to work on that confidentially, so our team enables that and uh, we apply all the data compliances and we help you with the research per project. So that's the research monthly license to uh, me to um, uh, access the TBA info server and run with your own data. Now, educational, which is not as available right now, is uh, the projects and courses which are developed by industry experts. So many of the industry experts are working with us and developing many cool projects, really, really cool projects uh, from uh, clinical informatics to, you know, drug discovery. So those will be available as we are completing those and putting them uh, on learn. So once they are available, we will have the educational $45 subscription also available right now. It's a great opportunity because right now we don't have all of this uh, ready, but we have the starter subscription ready, which has 36 courses. I mean, for ten dollars so i these are these are courses that will help you understand not about one discipline but uh different types of omics data analysis you will learn about machine learning data science you will learn about infectious diseases you will learn about cancer cancer you you can choose about all those specializations which are also included in this including microbiome research and you know all of that so, uh, I mean, uh, that's what uh, it is. And uh, if there are any further questions, I'll be happy to answer those or else uh, we will just conclude this meeting and I'll, we'll hope to see you uh, joining our programs and interacting with us and going through this omics logic journey. Over to you, Shri Gauri, for the conclusion and then we can uh, meet yeah. again very soon. Yes, sir. so in the chat box, I'm sharing uh, the contact details of Sparsh Dhar. So you can reach out to her for if you're having any queries regarding the research fellowship program. And if the participants have no further queries, uh, we are good to end today's meeting. So I look forward to seeing you all for the program. And with that, thank you and have a great day.